Hey y'all, we're going to see the lesson we're going to start working on today, which is on 10 by multiple angle formulas. Now, I broke this lesson up into three separate videos. Part one will be on double angle formulas. Part two will be solving equations with the double angle formulas. And part three will be half angle formulas. Um, basically, at the end, we'll sort of do a little bit of a conclusion. Now, just to let you know, um, the main purpose of this lesson will be to understand what the double and half angle formulas are be able to use the formula to simplify trig expressions, and also be able to use the formula to solve the trig equation. Now, like I said, the first last video is just going to be on the formulas themselves. Um, there is sort of an origin behind them, but what the purpose is of the double angle formulas is to make it so that you can find more angles than what's on the unit circle. Now, the first one we're going to talk about is the double sine formula. So the first one um, is really the sine of 2u is equal to 2 times the sine of u times the cosine of u. Now these formulas are typically given to you. Um, you don't have to memorize them per se. But one thing you should note here is that u is basically going to be in these formulas, sorry, in these two, um, sorry, on the right side of the equation, um, represent basically half of the angle that you're given. So here's a quick example for us. And the sine of 2x minus the sine of x. Now, what we can do to simplify this expression is really just replace the sine of 2x with um, the, the equation above. So for example, here we'll do 2 sine of x times the cosine of x minus the sine of x. This is typically how you can simplify the expression pretty quickly and easily. The one thing you could do later on is you could factor out a sine of x, and this will be important when we solve the equations. What we'll be left with is sine of x times 2 cosine of x minus 1. So be sure that you realize that you can factor out any common terms. Now let's take a look at this next example, sine of 4x. This one gets a little tricky because we have the sine of 4x. And if I want to simplify this a little bit further, what we could do is realize that this is really the sine of 2, 2x. Now, realize that the 2x in this case will be our original u value in the formula above. So all we're going to do is replace u in this equation with 2x. So u in this case will be 2x. So we have 2 times the sine of 2x times the cosine of 2x. Now, we're not going to be able to fully simplify this now, but the sine of 2x could also be simplified if we allow u to just be x in this case. So I'm going to replace sine of 2x with the sine, sine of x, sorry, 2 times, and then this sine of 2x is going to be replaced with 2 sine of x times the cosine of x times the cosine of 2x. Now, I know you guys are wondering, well, how do I make the sine, get rid of the cosine of 2x? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have to use the double angle cosine formula. Now, the double angle cosine formula will have to do with um, cosine of 2u. Once again, u is just some, is half of the angle that you're given, is equal to cosine squared of u minus the sine squared of u. Now, we could simplify this a little more. Um, I could go through the formulas for you. But if we were to replace the sine of u, um, or the cosine squared of u, with Pythagorean's identity, ugh, smelly guy. So we know the cosine of u, cosine squared of u, is really 1 minus the sine squared of u. 
Now, if we wanted to make this only um, the cosine of 2u in only terms of sine, we could combine like terms. And what happens is you end up with 1 minus 2 times the sine squared of u. Okay. Now, for the second part, we could have gotten the cosine of 2u in terms of only cosine. So to do that, we would change the sine squared of u into 1 minus the cosine squared of u using Pythagorean's identity again. And because we have a minus sign here, we have to distribute, and you end up with the cosine squared of u minus 1 plus the cosine squared of u. Now, using combining like terms, cosine squared of u plus cosine squared of u would give us 2 cosine squared of u minus 1. Notice that these two equations are um, useful in the sense that you can basically get it in terms of just sine or get it in terms of cosine. Now, let's look at an example. Cosine of 2x plus sine of x. Now, since we're dealing with sine of x, and that's, we can't simplify this part any further, our best bet in order to answer this question would be to convert the cosines of 2x into the sine equation, the second one that we have written here. So in this case, u would be x, so that would be 1 minus 2 sine squared of x plus the sine of x. We could simplify this a little bit more by factoring, but we won't have to deal with that right now. There's nothing so obvious that I can factor out. Now, if we were to take a look at the sine of 4x. Now, we did that problem before. Let's pull up what we had. At this point, we were at 2 sine of x cosine of x times cosine of 2x. So let's write that down. By the way, we could have also combined 2 and 2 to gotten 4. So I will just write that part down. We had 4 sine of x minus, oops, sorry, I'm just going to sneak back. Oh, we have the cosine of x too. Cosine of x, and we have plus or times the cosine squared, sorry, cosine of 2x. Now, we can simplify that cosine of 2x by using one of the formulas above. Um, it doesn't seem like it's going to matter super much which one we use. And when you see the equations, because we have a sine and a cosine, it doesn't really matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, um, let's do the 2 cosine of u minus 1, just so we can let him feel like he's part of the fun. Now, we could simplify this by distributing, but it's really not going to make this look a little nicer. Um, the only difference would be that it would just be expanded. So, okay. Now, that's basically the cosine. Of course, you have our third favorite trig function, the double tangent angle formula. Now, this formula is sort of the ugly one of the group and because it's dealing with a fraction, but we have the tangent of 2u is equal to 2 times the tangent of u all over 1 minus the tangent squared of u. So the one type of problem we're going to have to deal with is figure out the exact value of the trig functions given a certain situation. Okay? So, for example, find the exact value of sine of 2u, cosine of 2u, and tangent of 2u given that the secant of u is equal to negative 2 with um, pi over 2 is less than u, which is less than pi. Remember, this part here really just tells us what quadrant we're in. Since we're between pi over 2 and pi, we're really in quadrant 2. 
Now, if you remember that all students take calculus, we know that the sign is going to be positive and everything else will be negative. So, given that the secant of u is equal to negative one half, we can figure out, we know right away that the cosine of u is equal to negative one half because it's a reciprocal function. Now with this, you could use the unit circle or you could use a little right triangle that we have going on here. If this is u over here, then I know that the opposite is, sorry, the adjacent is one and the hypotenuse is two. Don't worry about the signage. Now, using Pythagorean theorem, we have one squared plus two squared, oh, sorry, one squared plus x squared equals two squared. One squared plus x squared equals two squared, so that would give us x squared is equal to three. And you take the square root, and x would be equal to radical three. The reason we have to do this is because now I can find the sine of u and the tangent of u. And using these three formulas, we can use the double angle formulas to determine the value of the doubles, the sine of 2u, cosine of 2u, and tangent of 2u. Now the sine is going to be the opposite of our hypotenuse, so it would be radical 3 over 2. And tangent would be adjacent over hypotenuse, sorry, wow, opposite over adjacent which would just be radical three. And remember the sine is the sine value is going to be positive. Cosine and the tangent will be negative. Now, using our formulas, we can figure out what the sine of two u is simply by using the fact that we know the sine of two is equal to two times the sine of u times the cosine of u. Now, the sine of u would be equal to radical 3 over 2. The cosine of u is equal to negative 1 half. Now, if you were to multiply these across, we should end up with negative radical 3 over 2. Now, the cosine of 2u, we have those multiple formulas that we could use. Personally, it doesn't really matter to me. I just like to just use whatever formula is available. So I'm going to use cosine squared of u minus the sine squared of u. So it's sort of very similar to Pythagorean identity, but just with that minus sign in front of the sine squared of u. So the cosine squared of u we know that the cosine of u is negative one half. The sine of u is radical three over two. So the square root, I mean, sorry, negative one half squared would give us one fourth. Then we have the square root of two radical three, oh, sorry, radical three over two squared would give us 3 over 4, which means that the cosine of 2u would be negative 1 half. Now finally, the tangent. Now before someone asks me, we know who the questioners are, um, you could theoretically, if you know the sine of u and you know the cosine of u, you could, I'm oh, sorry, cosine of 2u and the cosine of 2u, you could just do the sine over the cosine and get the tangent. It should work out either way. But just so that we can get some practice using the formula, we'll do 2 times the tangent of u, which is tangent is negative 1 radical 3, all over 1 minus the tangent, which is negative radical 3, squared. To simplify that, this would end up being negative 2 radical 3, all over 1 minus then negative radical 3 squared, which would give you negative 3 
sorry, negative radical 3 squared is 3, so we have 1 minus 3. We end up with negative 2 radical 3 over negative 2, which gives us radical 3, would be our answer. Now, if remember, tangents is the sine over the cosine, so if you were to take these two values, you would end up with radical 3. Okay, so that's basically it for the double angle formulas. So next we'll be dealing with, in video two, we'll be dealing with the um, quadrant, we'll be doing the, solving the equations using the double angle formulas.